Hey, what's up, Jungle Army? Subs here. Episode 209. We welcome back the one and only Mickey Mentor. The Fearsome Foursome are back in action. We're going to talk about Monday night's lackluster performance against the Tampa Bay Bucks. We're also going to talk about AJ McCarron. How did he fare? And is there a controversy? No, I don't think so. But we'll talk about it. That's all coming up on Inside the Jungle. Let's hit it! This is Inside the Jungle, episode 209. Recorded August 26, 2015. Good thing it didn't count. Video bandwidth for Inside the Jungle was made possible by the support from our Patreon community. Help support Inside the Jungle today by logging on to spnt.tv slash Patreon. Hey, what's happening, Bengals fans? It's Inside the Jungle. We're back for another edition of the Wednesday Night Roundtable. And guess what? We've got a full squad playing tonight. I'm Nick Strubley hanging out with the fearsome foursome. That's right, I said it. Anthony Casenza, Mickey Mentor, and Scott Bantel. Tonight, we recap that despicable showing on Monday night in primetime football. That was the nicest way I could have put it. We'll also talk about A.J. McCarron. How did he do on Monday night in his first game action in well over a year? Of course, we'll also take your phone calls, Bengals fans. That will be later on in the program. But let's welcome in. The man who's been missing the last few weeks, the one and only Mickey Mentor. Mickey, what's up, man? How you been? Pretty good. Thanks for having me on as a guest, Nick. I appreciate <laughs> it. We missed you last week on our, our fifth anniversary celebration, so I'm congratulating you on five years a week later. Thanks, man. I, I listened to the show. I was pretty proud to be a part of it for so long. It was cool, it was cool stuff. The show would uh, would not be where it's at today without you, my friend. So thank you for all that you do. Uh, you're making me blush. I have to on your return to Inside the Jungle, of course. All right. Looking forward to getting your take on what happened uh, Monday night against the Bucks. Of course, we also welcome in Mr. Cincinnati himself, Scott Bantel. What's up? Hey, Nick. Uh, talking bad football is still better than talking no football. So either way, it's a good day. It is a good day. You're right. I love Wednesday because we get to hang out and talk Bengals, good or bad, with you gentlemen. Of course, we also welcome in uh, in his new digs yet again. I'm liking the new background, Mr. King himself, Anthony Casenza. What's up, AC? Uh, Mr. King. That's uh, I, I was going to say Mickey's been the guy big leaguing people lately, not showing up on the show the past few weeks. But uh, Mr. King, that may, that makes me big league you guys, I guess, huh? It was just short for background, King. But oh, okay, okay, never mind then. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing well, Nick. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, did you have a good weekend? Yeah, yeah, it was okay. A lot, a lot of family time and uh, some time on the site as well. So, um, pretty busy, but it was good. All right, so I'm going to start to show off now with some ground rules, Bengals fans. If you are going to call into this program later this evening, if you are going to be negative and Debbie Downer about what happened Monday night. I will hang up the phone. It was a preseason game. All right? Let's not get carried away with what happened on Monday night. It didn't count. That's all that matters. With that said, Mickey, I'll start with you because it's been a while. What were your thoughts on uh, what happened on Monday night? What was Monday night? <laughs> right, exactly. I thought, that, I thought it was a bye week. Um, can I tell you the only thing that concerns me about that game? And, uh, you know, there was... A couple parts where you just shake your head. A, the AJ Green interception was just ridiculous. But what concerns me is that I'm starting to buy into this prime time hex. Like even you can't even escape it in the preseason, coming out flat, just looking like morons. And I get it's the preseason. I'm not worried about it. I actually did write a post earlier that day, which I thought was interesting. I think that the Tampa Bay defense is going to be pretty solid. So I wanted to see what the Bengals would do with the defense that it really, I think, is going to be pretty strong in this league. Love, you know, great defenses has follow, have followed Lovey Smith around um, uh, his, his whole time in the league. So I, I thought the Bengals would, um, you know, see a different look, maybe a more regular season look from the defense. And it looked like they did, and they didn't handle it well. But... Still, it's a preseason. You're not you bringing your A game out there. I just didn't like they show up once again on the national stage, and they're terrible. Yeah, primetime bug gets them again. 
Uh, it looked like, I mean, again, I'm not saying that they didn't have any interest in playing. It just looked like, Scott, that there was no energy, like they really didn't want to be out there in the first place. That's the way I took it, and that's the way it looked. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I thought as well. There was a couple of plays in particular that really got under my skin. I mean, look, it's the preseason. We say it every week. You know, the one thing we root for is no injuries. We don't care if they win or lose. So on that standpoint, you know, they came out without any injuries, so you can't be upset. But, gosh, you just hate to see what seemed to be some lack of effort plays. I, I thought on the Dre Kirkpatrick touchdown, you know, he seemed like he gave up on the play. Um, on that long run down the sideline by Doug Martin, I thought uh, Carlos Dunlap looked like he gave up on that play and wasn't trying. And, um, you know, there's a play later in the game with Marcus Hunt where the quarterback fumbled and the ball is like sitting there on the ground and he's standing there and he doesn't even realize that it's a loose ball. He's waiting for the whistle. So, you know, what I found disappointing was just really the lack of, uh, you know, I know it's preseason, but gosh, the lack of effort that we saw on Monday night was frustrating. AC, I know you're chomping at the bit. Lay well, I, I, I've been, I guess I've been a bit more by, uh, of the guy that buys into the primetime thing than some of the other, uh, some of you other guys and maybe even some of the readers on our site. I write about it a lot and some believe it, a lot don't, but uh, it just, the trend continues and, and that bothered me, obviously. Um, the effort level, like Scott mentioned, that bothered me. There was a number of plays. I think uh, Scott may have mentioned the Doug Martin run uh, where he was caught, it, initially he was behind the line of scrimmage, a couple of guys missed him, and then I, I, a linebacker had him, I think it was maybe Benny Ray or Emmanuel Lemur, uh, broke that and then ran all the way down to about the two or one yard line, and, and it was about a 30 yard run that should have been a negative two yard run, and you, you almost wonder if the guys got a little spooked because of some of the major injuries that happened a, a few days earlier, Jordy Nelson being one, Marquise Pouncey being another, um, maybe they got a little spooked and just wanted to take it easy, but that's not how you play the game, even if it is preseason. And, and that actually is how, number one, you end up getting hurt is when you play not to get hurt. And uh, it, it's it's when you don't play, it ends, you end up not playing well. And that's, uh, luckily, some guys didn't really get hurt, but they did not play well. And overall, I guess the major frustration for me is just the repetition of similar mistakes. You know, A.J. Green has a lapse in concentration. It turns into a pick six. Andy Dalton subsequently, uh, the, the next possession, throws a high ball that we've seen before. That's an interception. And then they get the ball again, and Jeremy Hill fumbles. So there's just a lot of repeating mistakes and a lot of uh, those mistakes that keep happening in prime time. That's very frustrating. What about the notion that the Bengals made the, the newly – Touted next best thing in the NFL, Jameis Winston looked like an all-star, Anthony. Well, uh, the Bengals, I, I think we've we've said it before. I think it's a little overblown, but they do have. There seems to be a lot of coming out parties for rookie quarterbacks and first-time starters. Um, not so much in the Marvin Lewis era, but I mean it has happened in uh, in his time here. But uh, there, there have been a lot of young players that have come out and all of a sudden had their coming out party against the Bengals and. The cynic in me almost thought that that was going to happen with Johnny Manziel last year, and it was the complete opposite, luckily. But um, yeah, you're right. It's it's it was just kind of the perfect storm, right? I mean, it's it was primetime TV. Uh, the number one overall draft pick is on the big stage, and here come the Bengals, who never play well in prime time. And you know, uh, Winston looked pretty good. He didn't look absolutely amazing, but he did hit some nice throws. Missed a couple, but uh, he did make the Bengals defense look silly at times. Your thoughts on the on the Bengals defense, Scott? Well, it was frustrating. I, I don't like Jameis Winston, so to see him um, shred up the defense was was frustrating. I was disappointed with the way the secondary played. Um, granted, the the throws by Winston they were they were good throws, uh, you know, but guys were a little more open than you'd like to see, especially with everything we've been hearing all preseason preseason long how how good Adam Jones has looked and how good. Drake Kirkpatrick has looked, and on Monday night, I didn't think any of them looked particularly good. Uh, you know, the pass rush wasn't there. Uh, it was just, you know, all around, it was just, you know, they just looked, I think you said it, lethargic, and I think that's the perfect word for it. I guess for me, Mickey, the, the biggest disappointment I had was the fact that Doug Martin was able to kind of run at will against his Bengals defense. 
You're muted, Mick. I can't hear you now at all. So you must, whatever happened with your, your settings, we, we can't hear you at all now. Let's try that again. Uh, AC, Doug Martin. I mean, the, it was real clear early on nobody wanted to tackle. <laughs> Doug yeah, that, that was the play that really stuck out to me that, that, said that it was going to be a long night. Uh, you know, they're, they're kind of moving the ball a little bit. Sure, Winston's making some throws, but, uh, you know, all of a sudden, Doug Martin, who has struggled since his rookie year of 2012, he, he like I said, he was caught, I think, a yard or two behind the line of scrimmage. A couple of guys miss him, and then a couple yards up the field, another linebacker or two misses him, and then he's off to the races and down to about the one or two-yard line. And that's, even in preseason, that's unacceptable from your starters. You, you can't have that, and that just showed that their, their head – and Hart wasn't in it. Uh, maybe they didn't prepare well. And that in itself is is kind of unacceptable as well because they had a long time to prepare for this game, even though it was a road trip. I mean, the last game they played was Friday, so they had about 10 days between games. So um, kind of being excusable for some of the performances you saw, especially from the starters on both sides of the ball. That's what worried me. I think we got Mickey back. Now let's try it again. Yeah, the defense looked poor. Um uh, you know, I missed what AC said. I'm probably stepping on his toes, but th there, there was nothing in this game to really get you excited. Um, you know, some fans might be excited by what we saw later in the game, which I, I'm sure you're going to touch on, but uh, the, the, from the first string uh, offense or defense, there was nothing to, you know, hang your hat on, nothing to look forward to the regular season, but it's still not something that concerns me. It is a preseason game. Yeah, it is a preseason game, and you know the Bengals, despite losing, it's not the end of the world. It didn't count. You know they're not going to miss the playoffs now because of this. Um, th what's disappointing about this is that you've got the continued storylines around the NFL and the national media. Oh, the Bengals can't win in prime time. I mean, who freaking cares? It's a preseason game, all right. I, I really didn't care that they lost. I I cared a little bit that they couldn't tackle Doug Martin. I cared a little bit that. Jameis Winston had all day to throw, and when he did have all day to throw, he made the right decisions and, and looked like an NFL quarterback. That was disappointing to me. But, look, it doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is what happens week one against Oakland. And so they've got plenty of time to, to get back to the drawing board and, and correct some of the effort mistakes that they made on Monday night. Um, again, I don't want to be negative I understand people are up in arms and they, they expect perfection from this team all the time. <laughs> I don't know why. You've been a Bengals fan for how long? Um, but to me, I, I think the biggest thing we could take away from, from this game and probably the biggest positive was we did get to finally see A.J. McCarron play quarterback in the NFL. And it feels like it's been forever since we've seen him play uh, any kind of football, Mickey. I know you're, uh, you're pro Dalton. You're a big Dalton believer. And so what are your thoughts on how A.J. McCarron did compared to what uh, Andy Dalton did in the first half? <laughs> That's a loaded question. <laughs> so uh, he played great against the Scrubs. Um, he did okay. And, and it's not – I will go step back for a second. It's not that I'm pro Dalton. I think Dalton's the best uh, quarterback on this roster. And I don't think we've seen anything to prove otherwise. If, if the season comes down to McCarron, we're going to be in a bad situation. So I, that, that's all I can say about that. I, it was good to see the kid finally play. I'm glad he he you know he did okay, but the, it's not like I'm going to be calling for him to replace Dalton. Now it is the preseason. Are, are you wanting to see him maybe play a little more with some of the, the ones and twos just to see what he can do? Or is this more of a... Dalton needs the reps now. We'll, we'll worry about that when that time comes later. I'll turn that back to you, Mickey, but okay. There you go. Oh. Um, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I don't I don't know. I think it, it was good to get the mix. I Personally, if I ran it, I would have kept Dalton out there until they scored. You know, here's your punishment. You're going to play against the third-string defense of Tampa Bay, if that's what it takes for you guys to finally get your head out of your rear. So uh, I, I don't know. But like everyone, we can pick apart everything. If the se Like I said before, if the season comes down to our backups, we're in trouble again. Uh, AC, I know you're a big 
Uh, I wouldn't say you're a Dalton. You're not pro Dalton. You're just kind of uh, eh when it comes to Andy Dalton, right? Um, I mean, give me your take on on what McCarron did. I know he what completed ten of his fourteen passes. Again, this is against Scrubs in, in Tampa, which uh, Tampa doesn't have the deepest team in the world. But again, he he was able to at least lead them on a a game uh, a scoring drive, uh, got them in the end zone. But uh, again, we're, we're we're tempering that with the fact that this was Scrubs for Tampa and, and second and third and even four stringers. Right, and I, I just. Kind of a side note, I think the writing was on the wall that McCarron played, uh, you know, the entire second half, and Josh Johnson didn't even really take a snap, and subsequently he he was gone after this game. So, um, you know, I, that tells you what the coaching staff's mindset was there. But uh, I, I thought McCarron initially was was pretty jittery. Uh, I think part of that was just you know general nerves taking first NFL snaps against another team, and um, there was a lot. The, uh, the offensive line play the entire night was terrible. Uh, from from top to bottom, and you know he was getting some pressure. So um, I, I liked some of the throws he made. Some of the throws, it, it was kind of the classic uh, young guy just immediately checked down to the running back. That worries me a little bit. But as he got to settle in a little bit, he and Jake Kumarau made a couple of nice connections late in the game, and uh, he threw some nice slant routes to him, which which were pretty impressive. And as you said, he led the team on a on a scoring drive, their only touchdown drive uh, of the game. So. Uh, I mean, that's a positive there. I do want to see him against some higher and stiffer competition than he probably faced in the second half of that game. Uh, but that probably won't happen until the fourth preseason game because this next one coming up is kind of known as the dress rehearsal where the starters will probably once again play an entire half, if not maybe a tiny bit more. Uh, and they, it, <laughs> based on what we saw last week, uh, last Monday, they need the work. So um, it, more McCarron may not come until the fourth preseason game at this point. But some good, some bad, and at least he didn't turn the ball over. Yeah. What did you make of McCarron, Scott? You know, he was fine. I, You know, I want him to look good because I, I want to feel confident in him if they need him this year, if, Dal- if Dalton would get injured. Um, I also would like him to look good because I would love in a year or so to have him sprayed bait. You know, there would be nothing better than in a year being able to try for a first or second round pick if he looks real good in the preseason. You know, like um, New England's been able to do with some of their quarterbacks in the past. Uh, the Falcons were able to do with job years back. Um, you know, so if they're able to leverage him into a good trade, that would be awesome. So, uh, you know, I root for him to do good, but... For the people that wanted to see A.J. McCarron start over Dalton, I think if you saw anything that makes you believe that he can outplay Dalton on Monday night, I think you're crazy. Um, you know, he looked okay against four stringers, but you know, most of his success came in that last drive, which by that time, you know, you're down to the guys at the end of the roster. Um, you know, a lot of guys not even trying because it's a blowout. So, um, you know, I, I didn't see anything that would make me feel comfortable if he has to start, uh, but. You know, it, it was good to see him out there and actually throw some footballs. All right, so week three preseason, gents. What happens if Andy Dalton in the first string offense comes out, plays like they did on Monday night? Now are we going to start having these questions really pop up about our quarterback and whether or not there's a controversy? No, I mean, they're, they're already popping up. I mean, the, the thing is, with with where the Bengals are right now, there's nothing they can do in the preseason or regular season that's going to limit these questions about Dalton. You know, it, it's almost an unfortunate circumstance of their success in that Andy Dalton can't do anything in the in the regular season short of throwing like 40 touchdowns and 10 interceptions that's going to get people off his back. You know, the only thing that's going to get people off his back is winning in the playoffs, and, and that can't be done until January. I agree. The people that want the controversy already, you know, have their their guns loaded. They're already they're already set with their arguments. What we're gonna see from here on out doesn't matter. I mean, how many years did the Colts go 0 and 4 in the preseason and no one cared because um, they were gonna be in the postseason? So it's the same kind of you know crap as that really. People have already made their mind up, like Scott said. Nothing that happens in these games is going to matter. So I, I, I don't understand the animosity about preseason. I, I honestly don't get it. It's just baffling to me. 
my my thought process on this thing is it's not so much that they lost it's how how they lose you know i mean it's if they lose by 10 points and you you take some positives out of the game and you know some guys played pretty well and the starters didn't maybe didn't play all that much and but they looked good kind of kind of what happened against the giants there i mean you you get you take some positives out of it and this this week i i the starters the offensive starters played an entire half and i I found very little to be positive about. They couldn't run the ball. Pass protection was awful. Um, even when good passes were made, they were tipped off a receiver's hand and, and made into a pick six that followed other turnovers I mentioned earlier. It's Preseason is not about wins and losses, in my opinion. It's more about how you look and how you play in those games and how your starters play. And when you're in the second preseason game and your starters play an entire half, and they look terrible. That's not promising. So if that continues again into the third preseason game, I'd be a little worried. And it's not so much, you know, oh, I want to create a quarterback controversy. I would just be worried if the starters play poorly again in an extended period of time in a game that's known as the quote-unquote dress rehearsal. So um, that's kind of my mind. Uh-oh, the loser. Sad comes preseason. Okay. He jumped back in there very briefly. All right, good. So, uh... Okay, so I'm going to ask this. I'm going to pose this question back to you guys as well because we we continue and con- we deal with this. It seems like all the time when it comes to primetime games. I can't. I, I can't stress this enough. I know it's a preseason game, but let's just say that the the Bengals offense goes out and lays another egg in the first what two and a half quarters next week or their next game. I guess it's this Friday uh, against the Bears, and then you know at what point are you starting to point the fingers at? Hugh Jackson and Marvin Lewis said, wait wait a minute, we're in week three of the preseason. Why aren't these guys ready to go? Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to point the finger at them. I, I, I don't get worked up about the preseason one bit for a couple of reasons. One, we got a four-year track record with, with this group of guys, Dalton, this line, A.J. Green. Their four-year track record is four years of the playoffs. You know, So they didn't all of a sudden forget how to play football. And when it comes to preseason, look – coaches aren't going to throw anything out there that they want other teams to see. True. You know, it's like preseason baseball. You know, when a, when a pitcher gets knocked around, you have no idea. He may be throwing only fastballs that day because he wants to work on the outside fastball. Um, you know, they're working on, on things that we're not privy to. And, you know, I'm not going to get worked up about, you know, these vanilla plays that they're running. Yeah, You know, it's, it's pointless. I'm going to go with their track record. Their track record is four years of playoffs. And so, you know, anyone that gets worked up about these preseason games and how they look is just unnecessarily getting their blood pressure up. Agreed. It's baffling. And then, I mean, I've been I've been gone for a while, Nick. So my 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 I guess I'm bo- boiling up here. But like, I'm gonna pick on someone in the chat room. Kyle Rhodes just said, if he continues to not get over the hump, we have to take a page out of the Pat's book and move on from players that aren't getting it done. It's just insane, man. We're in the preseason <laughs> that no one's you you're already think you're already banking on Dalton failing. It's just baffling me that like what what are you in this football fandom for? Like the the season hasn't even started. Preseason matters 0%. They could Dalton could throw 44 interceptions in the preseason, and it won't have a bearing on the regular season. The point is, the good teams show nothing in the preseason. Peyton Manning never plays a preseason game when he's in Indy. It's it's there's there's no creativity on offense. So I don't know why you would point a finger at Hugh. There's just no drive for the players to go out and kill themselves because the games don't matter. It, it's a it's a glorified practice so that the owners can sell tickets. That's why they're not scrimmages. Preseason games are our are, are basic run through of what we need in this what what um, we need in this season from like a, a system standpoint. We need these referees to do this. We need the teams to show up here. We need to flip the coin like this. The actual football doesn't matter. The only people that are 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 putting it all out there, and the guys are, that you are now saying, oh, man, he played pretty good, he looked good, are the guys that are fighting for a spot to even play in this league. You know, We're about to cut, drop from 90 to 53 players, um, and so there are guys that are li- literally leaving everything out there. 
we're not cutting Dalton. We're not cutting Jeremy Hill. We're not cutting A.J. Green. So if their heart's not in it, their concentration's not in it, they understand that this doesn't matter. At the risk of sounding like a broken record from what I just said to your last question, Nick, my, my issue is I, I agree with Scott and Mickey to a point, but my issue is a continuation and a repetition of seeing some of the same mistakes from the same players, uh, especially the starters. That occurred on Monday night, and these are things that supposedly had been worked on all offseason. We've heard all the talks about Jeremy Hill working on fumbling issues and all of that that he had uh, last season. We've heard about how Andy Dalton, once again, is working with quarterback guru Tom House and to really work on his footwork and work on these high throws. We've talked about how A.J. Green is a great football player, yet he still drops critical passes, and there's this high interception ratio when Dalton seems to target Green. All of those still came to light from your starting offense on Monday night. And if that continues in the preseason, regardless of who wins and who loses the game, that will worry me, and that would worry me as a fan, even though the games don't matter and even though the score doesn't matter and has no bearing on the regular season. That's That could play an issue into confidence going into the regular season. Uh, that's that's a coaching issue, obviously, if similar mistakes are still being made, and that's, that's kind of where my problem stems from, the performance on Monday night, and if it continues on the, in, in through the next game. I'm sure Marvin reviewed the game tape. I'm sure that the coaching staff, they all looked at it and were were upset. They probably went back to the drawing board on Tuesday morning or actually probably this morning, probably their first practice since that game, and they probably stressed to them how much better of an effort they need to make uh, in a short week because uh, it is going to be a quick turnaround. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe they need a short week, a quick turnaround, in order to, to get this bad taste out of their mouth. It's, again... I'm not trying to to discourage Bengals fans. I'm not trying to be negative because I, I generally think that it's a preseason game and it doesn't really matter, right? All we want to do is we want to get out of, out of there healthy. We want to limit our injuries and we want to see some of these younger guys that are fighting for roster spots play well and look good. And that was disappointing that we didn't really get a chance to see that on Monday night. Again, it's a preseason game. So Bengals fans... Just take a deep breath. All will be fine. Have faith. Come uh, come September what 13th when they kick off in Oakland against the Raiders. I want to touch on a, on a subject that uh, when I saw this over the weekend, I was really nervous about our game on Monday night, especially considering our injury history with our wide receivers. When Jordy Nelson went down with a ACL tear in a meaningless preseason game without even being touched, I immediately was like, no way, A.J. Green, sit out. I don't want you playing any more games the rest of the preseason. I don't, I don't want Marvin Jones playing either. The guy can't stay healthy. So I'm going to kick it around to you guys. Should the NFL, should they be eliminating the preseason and just have joint practices like they did this week with the Giants? I'll start with you, Scott. No, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I've gotten so tired of that argument this this week. I'll I'll get behind. Maybe they should shorten it. Maybe two games. Maybe three. But look, at, at the end of the day, you've got to, they have to practice. You know, if they don't practice and they don't have scrimmages, you're going to have this sloppy play just being regular season games instead of preseason games. And, and look, half of these injuries are non-contact injuries. That you know, it, it has nothing to do with the preseason. They happen in practice. It's an unfortunate aspect of the game. So, you know, we can't we can't schedule out injuries. I, I mean, they're just they're going to happen. It's just the nature of football. So, while it's unfortunate, you hope it doesn't happen to your team. You hope it doesn't happen to a big player. Um, you know, I, I saw something just just this uh, this week that there's been 25 ACL tears. It's less than one percent of the entire NFL players. So. You know, it, it's not like this huge epidemic. It just seems that way because it's been some big name guys that went down, and um, you know, I, I mean, eventually these guys got to get out there and, and play. I, they're still going to tear them in practice. I mean, that's how Benjamin did it. That's how um, Orlando Scandrick did it. Um, you know, it, it's not like getting rid of preseason games is all of a sudden going to stop guys from tearing their ACLs. It's true, and, and you know. It, it's a necessary evil for the the league where that that the NFL has become. 
you know, in college, the big time programs have their preseason in the first couple weeks of the regular season. They schedule teams that are just warm up teams for when they actually have to play. You know, teams that matter. It's terrible to say, but it's true. We we know it's true, uh, and that's kind of what you're getting in the preseason. Um, it's an evaluation of the second tier players. There's no, I mean, we how many times have you seen hard knocks? There's no question of who's not getting cut. It's the people that are on the bubble that you're really evaluating. Um, I bet the majority of film parts of the game and not the beginning. So you can't get rid of it. They could change it, but um, you know, you met. I think you mentioned Jordy Nelson. That was a non-contact injury. I mean, he could go to bed, you know jumping up to put a book on the shelf and had the same injury. It's terrible. Things happen, but I don't, you know, I don't think they can eliminate the preseason part of it. Yeah, I, I am in agreement with both these guys. And um, I, I especially, uh, I, I know a lot of people like the idea of more football and there's some talk of 18 regular season games. I don't necessarily like that because of the potential watering down of, uh, the season, and, and that's what makes football so great. Each game means so much, um, and adding two more teams might kind of water down the playoff bracket and the whole deal, so uh, I'm not really into that. I will say that it was a little scary for the Bengals on Monday night anyway because Tyler Eifert took a big shot to the same arm he hurt last, uh, last year that caused him to miss the entire season, and he looked like he was grimacing in pain. Uh, and he dropped the football at, at the one-yard line after he took the shot. So that was a little scary. And then Georgia Loka, I think, had a, a kneecap bruise trying to break up a fight, of all things, on the field. So um, those are two starters you don't want to lose. It sounds like both are okay, which is good. But uh, that was a little scary, especially given, like what you said, Nick, what happened this weekend. I'm all for shortening it, that's for sure. I don't know if four games are really necessary. Um I, and I don't know that you need to expand to the regular season either. I just think that the NFL, the preseason games, I think there are four for a reason. I think a, a large part of it has to do with money. You want two home dates in those preseasons so that you can fill your stadium, sell your beverages, sell your snacks, and make money. I mean, that's but plain and simple. I mean, a lot of these guys we know are not going to make the team. They're there to make the owners money. I mean, that's just the, the cold, hard truth about it. And... It's not exactly the greatest football to watch. It's not even great for us when the starters are playing like they were on Monday night. So let alone you throw in this third and fourth stringers and you're just like, is this game over yet? Can this just be like a running clock? Why are we stopping it? Let's go. Come on. That's the way I look at it. It's preseason football. It's rough. And it's rough for everybody. Players, coaches, fans. Yikes. Anyway, I'd uh, love to hear your thoughts, Bengals fans. Inside the jungle at spnt.tv is the email address. And, uh, yeah, love to hear from you. All right, let's open up the phone lines, Bengals fans. It's that time. If you want to get in touch, 404-946-3397 is the number to call. We get the calls as long as we're getting them. Again, ground rules, no negativity. I don't want to hear about, oh, the Bengals are going to go 8-8. Eight eight. They're going to miss the playoffs this year. Marvin Lewis is a joke, and he can't make the, the can't win a primetime game enough. It was a preseason game. Let's, let's take a chill pill. That's my ground rules. If you're negative, I will. Use my finger and hang up on you. That's for sure. <laughs> AC, you got something you want to add on to, uh, for tonight's show? Well, we've we've been pretty negative on uh, on the Bengals, and rightfully so. They didn't look so great on Monday night. And, uh, you know, kicking off this positivity vibe with the phone calls we're going to be taking, I wanted to say that uh, P.J. Dawson, the rookie linebacker, looked, looked pretty good uh, Monday night. He was one of the few guys who did. And I think that's pretty promising for a linebacker group that might be viewed as one of the weaker ones on the team. He had a goal line stand at the one yard line, and he kind of knifed through and made a tackle. He made had another tackle for loss on a running back, and uh, played a lot better than he did in the preseason opener. So that was one guy that kind of opened my eyes, and I've I've liked that guy since they drafted him. And it's good to see him play pretty well, and he like he did on Monday night. He did play well, and uh, hopefully he keeps playing well because we're going to need him in that linebacker court, that's for sure. All right, it's time to fire up the jungle line. Area code 269. Hi, who's this? Hey, what's up, fellas? It's Doc Ox. It's good to talk to you guys again. It's been a while, stranger. How you been, brother? <laughs> Not too bad. Summer fun, I guess. 
Well, I mean, it wasn't Monday night, but okay. <laughs> What's yeah. on your mind tonight? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I guess I somewhat anticipated some of the negativity, you know, that we were going to see, but holy cow, this blows me away. But uh, something I, I mentioned in the, in the chat room is something we got to make sure we don't overlook is the fact that, you know, we did make it through without having any, to my knowledge, any severe injuries. So I'll take an ugly loss to Tampa Bay over a, a Kajana Carter blown out knee, something of that nature. So just my two cents. That's something to take away that we may be overlooking a bit. I think you've hit it right on the head. I yes. think that's a perfect uh, point. You're right. We did come out relatively injury-free. Um, you know, there there are some guys here and there. I think what Georgia Loca, I think – I can't remember who said it, but he he's got a, a little bit of an injury, but he'll be he'll be fine. Uh, it was a little worrying hearing about Eifert's elbow. You don't like that, but you're right. I mean, they got out of there pretty good in pretty good shape. Would you have liked pretty to have good, seen yeah. them play a little bit better? Absolutely, but it's the preseason. The good thing it didn't count. Exactly, and I did. Uh, I promise this isn't too much negativity, but. Why is Alford not back there returning punts and kicks more frequently? We know what we have in Tate, and, you know, they keep putting him back there, and I don't understand. You know what he's going to do, for better or worse, but I, I know some of this is my Mountaineer bias coming out, but I'd like to see Alford back there on more. If I remember he had maybe one punt return, one kick return, get some of those young guys back there, see what they can do, see if they can supplant Tate and uh, so we can see this uh, – this tater tot show on the air in the future episode. Right. So I think that's your answer. I think Mr. Superling's got an inside track. He wouldn't make that bet. He wouldn't make that deal if he didn't have some sort of some pull in there. So I think Nick's against us on this one. I am against <laughs> you. Um, but I've also been saying the minute he resigned that he was making the team. So in the, I've been on record all along. Shirtless or no shirtless, uh, I, I thought he was going to make the team regardless. The fact that they resigned him told you all you needed to know. Uh, but but again, I, what I have seen from from Alfred in the very limited experience he's got returning kicks, he's definitely he's definitely quick man. You definitely like seeing that. Can they utilize him elsewhere? I think they can. I think they should. But again, when it comes to special teams and when it comes to returning punts and, and kicks, you want somebody that you know is going to catch that ball every time. And, you you know, as much as we want to knock Brandon Tate, the issue with him is not catching the ball, right? It's what he does after he catches it. That's what frustrates people. So I'd much rather have somebody that's right. not going to turn it over than, I don't know. But then again, you do, you do lose out on the fact that somebody could take it to the house at any moment like Alford could. Right, and the fact that he's not getting on the field more, does that mean that he's a lock to make the team, or does that mean that they're not sure about his capabilities? That's that's a you know, question that I would have. I think they're not sure yet. I think they need to see more. And obviously with the way the first-team offense played on Monday night against the Bucks, that, that limited his chances to get out there and, and show what he could do because they struggled offensively in that half. And so – I don't know. And now he's not going to get a lot a lot of playing time this next game because the offensive starters are, are probably going to play two and a half to three right. quarters. So you're looking at week four against the Colts as maybe this is this is his chance. Yeah. Well, let's hope we can make the best of it and uh, we can finally boot Tate from the team. <laughs> Y'all want that, but he's making it, man. I'm, I'm 100% confident. That's right. Well, I'll let you guys take some more calls. Keep up the good work, guys. Appreciate it, Doc. We miss you, man. Don't be a stranger. Will do. Take care. Rude, that's Doc Ox leading us off here on Inside the Jungle. Yeah, Mick, you've been a while. You've been gone for a while, so I mean, I'm sure you are aware of the bet, but are you are you confident in uh, in the ability of Brandon Tate moving forward? Is he a lock now in your eyes? He's a lock. You do think he's a lock? Do not. Oh, you don't? Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> I, I, I mean, they've got to make that transition at some point. I, I don't know. You know, like, the, there's a huge calling for Brandon Tate to not return kicks, and that's 
if they could get a guy of Tate, right? At the least. That's an easy move to kind of gain some momentum with some fans. You know, these people that are just bitter to their core. And I don't know. I th- I think I honestly think Tate will be looking for a job this offseason. I mean, the, the, at the end of this offseason. I, I know we keep saying year after year, oh, Tate's gone, Tate's gone, and, and it, it never seems to happen. I it, it, it may not happen this year, but I, I would think that this might be the biggest chance that he would be gone, given how many guys they're giving looks at kick returns. Alford's now being brought in. You're now seeing Giovanni Bernard getting looks as a kick returner and punt returner. Um, and then you've also got Adam Jones to throw in there every once in a while, too. So um, I, I know we keep saying it every year after year. I know he keeps coming back and, and – uh, returning kicks for this team, but I think that this year probably would be the, the most likely he would not be on this roster given how many other guys they're trying out there. Well, we'll see. Don't hold your breath, gents. <laughs> Let's go back to the jungle line. Eric Goat 513. Hi, who's this? Hey, guys. This is AK calling from Tallahassee again. Hey, what's up, AK? Hey, what's going on, guys? A couple of things, of course. We didn't put forth the best performance, but I'm not going to really dwell on that too much. Uh, my question basically deals with uh, with uh, Sean Williams. Seems like Sean Williams has been pretty much a disappointment here. So do you guys think that Josh Shaw and possibly Leon Hall will rotate in as our backup safety this year? Mickey, you're our resident uh, secondary man. What are your thoughts on that? I don't know about Leon Hall. I don't know that he has what it takes to play that position, but Josh Shaw is someone that for sure I could see, you know, having a spot. Um, you know, I see you see some things from him that that you really like. But Leon Hall at safety, you know, he is a finesse corner, always has been. Never's been that that hard knock guy and I don't I don't see some of the things that you ask your safety to do him being able to do. So, um the Shaw part, sure. To Leon Hall, I don't, I don't know, but I agree. Williams hasn't really lived up to what we hoped he could have been. I know Shaw is your guy, AC, but you know one of the things that always sticks out to me is Marvin Lewis says you can't, you can't make the team if you're in the tub all the time. I'm not, I'm probably butchering the quote, but um, I mean Sean just he can't stay healthy to save his life, and when he's out there, he he kind of looks lost. A little bit. Uh, the knock on him when the Bengals took him a, a couple of years back was that he, at Georgia, was asked basically to be an in-the-box run-stopping safety, and he didn't really, he didn't even really know much about passing, uh, pass defense, pass formations. He, they didn't really even coach him up on that, which is a little interesting. Um, so that's obviously they've had to do some coaching up on that with him. Um, I, I really like Josh Shaw. I, I, you know, I, I'm, he's kind of a favorite of mine, and, and he's actually played pretty decent. He, he got beat a couple times on Monday night, but he also made a couple plays. And there's Deron Smith, too, the, the kid out of Fresno State they drafted, and it seems like a lot, of, a lot of fans and even some of the coaches are high on him as a safety, so that's another guy to keep an eye out for. It's, it's kind of a scrum there behind um, uh, Nelson and Aloka. I think they're kind of trying to find something – else for Leon Hall to do. I don't know that he'll be right there as a backup safety all the time, but it is it, when they want to mix up formations and have his, uh, a lot of defensive backs on the field, maybe you'll see him in kind of a safety-like role, but um, he's going to be a corner. AK, is this you uh, You tweeting about Mr. Bantel's beard? Yes, it is me. He's looking very Carson-like with that beard tonight. I just saw this come across my Twitter. Yay, Mr. Bantel does look like he's uh, he's got the Carson Palmer beard rocking. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, my other question before I get out of here. Uh, Emmanuel Lamore, what are your thoughts on him? Because I feel like he's, if there's anybody in our linebacking court that could possibly be replaced by uh, someone on the bench, I feel like it's him. So what are you guys' thoughts on Emmanuel Lamore? Here, here's a linebacker that we really had a lot of hopes for, right, going into, I believe it was preseason two years ago. And we were penciling him in as the starter, and then what happens? He got he got injured and missed the, the entire season. So 
Scott, what have you seen so far here in the preseason from Lemur? Yeah, and I was one of his loudest proponents uh, two years ago and last year. I, you know, I was a little disappointed with the way he played last year. At times he looked good. Uh, at times he was very disappointing. Um, you know, he certainly he's good in coverage, um, but you know he, he he just seems to disappear in games, and the the injuries are starting to to concern me as well. In fact, he's injured right now. I think he missed practice today because of a hamstring. So you know, you start to get to get worried about the injuries as well. So I don't, you know, I, I know in in all the roster projections we've done so far, he's been on the team, but I don't necessarily think he's a lock. Um, you know, I, I could see someone like a Chris Carter maybe making a push and and knocking Lemure out of that roster spot. So, uh, you know, the way he's played, I don't think there's anything that says he deserves to be a lock. Well, hopefully we see improvement from him. And uh, I don't was he demoted to second? I mean, he didn't start the game against Tampa, am I right, guys? Didn't uh, didn't Dawson end up getting the start over Lemur? No. No? no, so Lemur did start. Never mind then. I'll take that back. Scratch that, AK. <laughs> well, I do want to say thanks, guys, for having me on again, and I appreciate everything you guys do. I love the insight, and you guys keep it up, man. Well, thanks, AK. Thanks for calling in, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you again soon, buddy. Take it easy. Good day. Yeah. That's AK here on the Jungle Line, giving us a ring here on Inside the Jungle. Again, that number, 404-946-3397 is the number to call if you want to get in touch. Bengals fans, what else should we touch upon? What are you looking forward to? I guess we could talk about uh, the next game against the Bears. AC, I'll start with you. What uh, What do you want to see? Obviously, you want to see improvement from the offense, right? Yeah, I mean, improvement from the starters. Uh, it just yeah, a little bit more crisp play, more so what we saw against the Giants. I mean, the, the, the Bengals absolutely dominated the Giants in almost every phase of the game, and that was from the starters all the way down. So, um, you know, I kind of want to see more crisp play there. But I, I guess if you want me to be really specific, I was incredibly disappointed with the offensive line play on Monday night. I, I thought it was weak. I thought from the starters all the way down to the second and third teams, it was it was terrible. And that really needs to get shored up. And I think you'll see better quarterback play, obviously, when that happens. And and one other specific thing, I, I'm getting a – I don't want to say I'm worried, but the productivity from Giovanni Bernard in the preseason is, has been non-existent in, in any phase. They've tried him as a returner. He hasn't had an impact there. He really hasn't broken a, a catch for a, a, a sprint. And uh, he's not running the ball very well either. So I, I hope that that picks up as well. How about you, Scott? Well, I mean, I don't know. I you just like to see the first string look a little more crisp. I, you know, I, I'm not sure they're going to play as long as they normally do in the third in a third game because of how short the rest is, going from a Monday to a Saturday. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the first string actually doesn't play as much as we're normally used to them. I I wonder if that second game wasn't a little bit more of the Bengals dress rehearsal, and you'll see a, a shorter stint by the, the starters in Game 3, which I'd be fine with. It's an interesting point. Didn't think about the short rest, but if they're struggling on offense like they did against the Bucks, uh, I'm going to want them to play a lot more than two quarters. That's just my take. What about you, Mickey? I don't know. I don't think they were struggling. I think if it were me, I would say something like, you guys can – your night's over when you score two touchdowns. Could be your first two drives. I mean, it could be awesome. That, that tell me that wouldn't motivate a group of guys that don't really want to play. That would be a big incentive, that's for sure. You score on your first two drives, you're done. <laughs> go sit, go shower, you're done. That's uh, that's it. I mean, wouldn't that wouldn't that be awesome to see? They go out, they they balls out, they play for six minutes. They did what they were asked to do. I'd I'd be happy with that. Yeah. I agree. And, yes, I agree with you as well, Scott. I'd much rather them come out healthy than looking good. That's uh, that's a good point as well. Let's go back to the jungle line, though. Area code 513. Hi, who's this? Hey, this is James from uh, Cincinnati. What's up, James? Uh, not much. Um, just thinking about the uh, game on Monday reminds me of something. Uh, back in 2004, I want to say maybe 2006, the Bengals played the, uh, the Patriots in the preseason. 
And the Patriots kept their starters in for like three quarters, and the Bengals took their starters out right away and we're just clowning the Patriots. And I'm sitting here thinking, oh, my God, the Bengals are going to the Super Bowl. Their second string is just beating the crap out of, uh, out of the Patriots' first string. And I don't remember a Super Bowl game that year. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think I actually remember yeah. that preseason game as well. Didn't they? It was, uh, it was good, uh, good times. Yeah. So what are you looking forward to on Monday then? Or I'm sorry, Friday uh, night. On Monday? Well, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to watch too much of the game because I'm going to be at a at a thing with my uh, family. But um, I was just thinking about a uh, – I can't take credit for this. I read it on a message board, somebody, a uh, screen name, uh, Geta. He, uh, he said, do you remember the, um, the Looney Tunes uh, character, the little frog, um, that, you know, the guy sees it dancing and then he shows it to somebody and it's not dancing? Uh, I think so, yeah. That's the Bengals. <laughs> okay. You watch them at 1 p.m. when only, you know, the fans of both teams are watching and, you know, Sanu's passing touchdown to Dalton and Giovanni's clowning everybody for 98-yard t- uh, touchdown runs. And then when, uh, when your friends who, uh, don't, who, you know, who aren't Bengals fans watch them, they croak. <laughs> I All wish right. I could take credit for that. That is brilliant, but I can't. That's funny. That's, uh, that's a good, James. <laughs> Well, Seriously, I, I really do wish I had thought of that, but what are you going to do? Sorry, man. That's funny. All right. I'll let you guys go. I appreciate the call, James. Sure. Bye. That's uh, James from Cincinnati here on the horn. Uh, I saw something today which really made me crack up. You're familiar with the DirecTV commercials with uh, the, the NFL quarterbacks? I saw a, a meme today on Facebook that says, Hi, I'm Andy Dalton, and I have DirecTV, and it's him, like, arms up celebrating, and then, Hi, I'm national television uh Andy Dalton and I'm on and I have cable and I I thought that was hilarious. Well done whoever made that meme. That's, That's pretty, pretty funny. Cool. Yeah. So yes. Uh so all right, let's do some shout outs, shall we? Shout out. I don't want to predict scores. It's the preseason. Who knows what's going to happen. They could come out and lay an egg like they did against Tampa or they could dominate the Giants like they did a week two weeks ago. I look. Just come out of this game healthy, please. That's all I ask. Thank you Bengals. All right. Start us off. Uh, Mickey, we'll go first because you haven't done one in a while. I'm shouting out Andre Smith because I'm fired up. Uh, for some reason, he's getting ripped in our chat room right now, and I'm going to say I think Andre Smith's been a pretty solid player for the Bengals. Um, I mean, everyone, someone just called him another word for a cat. I mean, I don't get that at all. He's a solid right tackle. He's had a couple injuries in his career, but he's been pretty plug in and don't worry about it. So I, I don't get it. So my that's my shout out. All right, good, good, <laughs> good shout out. Thanks for keeping it clean, Mickey. I appreciate that. This is a family show. We try to make it a family show at least. How about you, Scott? You got a you got a shout out for us this week? Yeah, I've got a shout out for a, a new follower, a guy I've interacted with a couple times this past week, Andrew in DC. It's at Andrew in DC one two three, and then a shout out to Mickey for joining us tonight. Uh, you know, it's good to good to have Mickey back. Uh, beards unite. He has no response. <laughs> okay, he's we're moving on. Good shout out as well, Scott. How about you, AC? I've uh, got a couple, so bear with. Um, I am going to shout out the guys at the Sports Huddle at ESPN Radio Lexington. I think it's Matthew Lawrence, uh, Chris Cross, which is kind of a funny name if you remember that 90s rap band. But um, they uh, had me on their show yesterday evening, and uh, very nice guys. We talked some bangles. Um, there's another... Uh, I got a new follower, Dustin Balin, I think, B-A-I-L-E-N. Uh, and then the beer of the week, Nick, uh, is a Left Coast Brewing Company Trestles India Pale Ale. And if you're not familiar with what Trestles is, it's an epic surf spot about 10 minutes from my house. Uh, so they named a beer after that beach. It's a, it's a good beer. And I would be remiss, Nick, if I did not congratulate you as well. Uh, apparently you got a new radio gig uh, or, or TV gig um, calling, was it high school football? 
Yes, I am doing uh, radio here in Northwest Ohio. I am the color commentator. I am the John Madden of Perrysburg High School football this fall, and we'll be uh, offering color commentator on 100.7 FM here in the Glass City. So yeah, I'll be uh, covering Perrysburg High School football. Thanks for the thanks for that. I was uh, was not going to mention it. You got you got to self promote, buddy. I, I self I self promoted my interview on on ESPN Radio Lexington. So you got to self promote a little bit, right? I do enough promotion here on this podcast, so but right. for the kind of, that is <laughs> right. when you said crisscross, I thought you meant the guy who sang sailing. But that oh, was Christopher well, I was see, I was going way back to like jump, jump, crisscross, oh, yeah. jump. That's where I was going back. But anyways, it's a different crisscross. So. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give a shout out to some of the new folks that are in our chat room tonight. Uh, Omar, Shiv, it's good to see some new blood here in the chat room. Also, going to give a shout out. Obviously, Doc called in, but it has been a while. And uh, good to see Doc Ox is alive and well and back in the chat room, chat room joining us here on Wednesday night. I'm also going to give a shout-out to our newest patrons on Patreon, Robert Van Prague, Keith Clark, and John Kinzer, who are all kind enough to contribute to our Patreon campaign. So if Brandon Tate does make this roster, I have committed to the fact that if we hit our next goal on Patreon, I will do one episode of Inside the Jungle shirtless. We still have a ways to go to reach that goal, but again, if you want to help support what we're doing here on the podcast, spnt.tv slash Patreon is the URL to, to help us out, and we appreciate all the support we've received so far for this podcast. All right, final thoughts, gentlemen, as we wrap up episode 209, Mickey Metzer. We're glad you're back, man. We, we missed you the last five weeks, but we're glad you're back. I'm glad to be back, Nick. Um... I'm glad that we're getting close to real football, and I, I I don't know. I'm just I'm pumped. I I I don't I understand people's reservations about the Bengals, but this uh, is a team that makes the playoffs every season, and if we can stay healthy, we can do some damage. So I'm just excited for that. That's my final thought. Good stuff. And before I get to. Uh... Scott and AC's final thoughts. You didn't think I was going to forget about this, did you? Time now for the Brandon Tate Countdown to Kickoff. Presented by nobody. All right, so we're at 17 days. i got to go back. Last week I was so excited at the fact that we've got the, we got the actual audio clip from Brandon Tate that I didn't even read the, <laughs> the time on the countdown. So this week we're at 17 days, 18 hours, 23 minutes until Brandon Tate is taking it to the house against the Raiders. Exciting stuff. That is your... Oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> that was the Brandon Tate countdown. That wasn't going to be a Final thoughts, Scott Vantel. I'm just going to tell Bengals fans to uh, you know calm down a bit. Twitter's, Twitterverse and uh, my text messages were blowing up on Monday night with people having hernias for uh, really nothing. Remember, folks, it's preseason. It means nothing. Uh, they don't really game plan for these. They don't uh, run any any real plays. It's just, you know, calm down a bit. Say, save, the, uh, save the energy for the 16-game regular season. <laughs> save the energy. That's right. I, I, I agree with you, Scott. Good stuff, as always. Thanks for bringing it this week here on the program. Final thoughts, Anthony Casenza. My final thought is that I miss Fontes perfect, and I hope he gets out on the field soon. Uh, this this linebacker core needs him. The defense needs him. He's the guy that tends to line a lot of the defenders up, especially in that front seven. Um, and if Monday night was in any indication, then um, – you know, the Bengals miss him too. So I, I hope he comes back soon. Obviously not too soon, but uh, as soon as possible when he's ready. There's no chance we see him on Friday night, right, guys? There's no chance, right? This was, I think this was the game that they said that they were going to aim for him to come back, but I, I, he's not even practicing. So um, I, I don't think so. No, I, I'm, I'm in full agreement with you both. Or actually, yeah, everybody here. There's no way. I would keep him off the field as long as he possibly can. My final thoughts, again, look, chill out, chillax, uh, relax, whatever you want, whatever word or term you want to use for 
whatever it is you need to calm down about this Bengals team, use it because it didn't count. I'm glad they got it out of their system now rather than in week one against the Raiders. Could you imagine if they played like that against the Raiders? It would be a long, long, long season if we had stuff like that. So let's hope that, again, it was just a blip. It was a primetime game, and they get it out of their system, and they got it out of their system, and that they're ready for week one against the, uh, the Oakland Raiders. Big thanks to everybody who tuned in live here at CincyJungle.com. Of course, uh, if you want to join us live for our live broadcasts uh, every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock Eastern, you can right here at CincyJungle.com. And if you can't make the live broadcast, don't worry. You can always download our audio podcast and our video podcast, by the way, on demand. Uh, we're in iTunes. We're in the TuneIn Radio app. We're also in Stitcher Smart Radio for the audio. If you want video, if you want to subscribe to the video, we, we are in iTunes as well. But again, the best and easiest way to subscribe to Inside the Jungle so you don't miss a single episode is to download our Inside the Jungle app, which you can find at spnt.tv slash apps. It's available for both Android and the iPhone platforms, the iPad as well. So check it out. Again, that web address, spnt.tv slash apps. All right, enough, enough of that. It's time to wrap up episode 209. If you have any feedback about this program, you can always email me inside the jungle at spnt.tv and follow me on the Twitter as well at Nick Suberling. Special thanks to our associate producers Andy Lanham, Larry Rolston, Mike Vardy, Chris Setters, Fado Bayari, and Josh Schuster. Inside the Jungle is an SPNT production. For more information about our other podcasts, make sure you log on to spnt.tv and check out all our great work over at cincyjungle.com. So, for Mickey, Scott, AC, I'm Subes. We will see you next Wednesday. Enjoy the game Friday night, everybody. Boo day!